Welcome back to the podcast. I'm very excited to be here today together with Rebecca. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm very excited to talk to you about something that is really something that aligns a lot with my work of healing, energetic healing, something that's part of also my five layers of healing in my healing oracle card deck. And I'm just um yeah excited about our conversation today how are you feeling today i'm feeling very good and also excited um i love to talk about uh everything with healing and within this subject so i'm super excited because it's my first time so i'm mm -hmm. also feeling like this is so precious <laughs> to do it with yeah. you yeah and it's it's so special because we met many many we, we were just speaking about how many years ago it was we met like over a decade ago, and you were attending my um, prenatal yoga classes, which was something that I was doing uh, on a regular basis in Stockholm. And it was it's also part of my doula work as a birth doula. And I, I was supposed to be there to, to support you and your partner in your birth, but things happened in the world and there were restrictions. But I'm... I mean, we've been in the flow together for a long time and now reconnecting. And I'm so excited to hear about your journey. And even from back then, I remember you were getting in, like you were working on your body, on your energetic body, your your intuitive body. I want to hear about your journey and, and weaving that into where what you're doing today. Yeah. So yeah, I as we mentioned, I have I have two kids, and it was during my first pregnancy. I I worked in classes uh, with you, um, and I live with my husband in Stockholm. Um, so uh, I used to be a person who was very like technical, logical, and uh, performer, and the good girl, good grades, good good job, wanted to raise my career and stuff. And then uh, actually in 2016 was the first time that I got introduced to the spiritual world because I was with some friends uh, at uh, Koshika and we were on this like regular morning flow yoga by the sea. Uh, and I just say hello to the instructor and we did the, the class. And afterwards she was like, Rebecca, can you stay? And I was like, what? me what I have have I done wrong <laughs> uh, and she wanted to share something that came to her during the class um, so we stood there alone and she just like told me my my whole life up to that time and she shown me all my wounds and she encouraged me to look inside and to allow myself to give space to heal and I just went from there like what just happened uh, but I started to, I get really ex um, interested because I always like want to find solutions and I, I'm curious. So I started to do meditation and yoga. And that was why when I got pregnant, I was like, this should be more a deep journey than a medical state. So when I found you, that you were nearby and doing uh, the yoga classes for pregnant women. I just felt like, yeah, I need to do this. Uh, and both my pregnancies were really like the the real spiritual awakening for me because I realized uh, how strong we women are and the nature of it and what happens when we connect with the with the child and also with the body and uh, giving birth is just like this out of body experience and after that it just like the interest that grew uh, on me like to how deep can I go within myself and yeah so um after my children because when they are very small I lost my my connection to my myself I was a mother and I was a wife so when my little girl were about around one year, I was like, I need to do something new. I need to try something that really like connects me to my own person when I'm not in a role. So a friend took me to CAP 
uh, which is Kundalini activation process. Uh, and so I went on the class and I just found my home. It was just such a deep awakening for me. And yeah, so I have been doing that practice for two years and now I'm a facilitator. So that's why you and me connected again, because we have this magical event uh, on 11-11 where I wanted to invite you and also um, talk a bit about. Mm. How lovely. And that that is such a powerful initiation process for you with that having that activation in 2016 with someone telling you it's it was like a portal opening up and then I think it's powerful something that we didn't discuss before but the initiation of like all of the different cycles of life we all have different but then you have that cycle of not all women but you have the cycle of um you know, the maiden time, the mother time, it can be mothering and birthing something, a project, it can be children, it can be anything. And then you, and that's where all of the wisdom grows. And it is interesting to, for women who have experienced like growing life, that, that, that it, I mean, it's a, microcosmos of the macrocosmos that births everything so i can imagine it's a big huge initiation and the birthing process being i mean we all have different birthing processes it can be after a very uh i see like these uh, releases and very when you go into that deep mystery and going down into the underworld and then having that birthing experience it, it's really powerful and i love that you're doing this energy healing event on 11 11 my favorite <laughs> code <laughs> um and uh, and it's uh, we can actually mention that now for those of you who are located in sweden um and wanna join on the 11th of november 2024 uh, rebecca has um, generously gifted us all here with two tickets, right? Um, for anyone who would love to, we will hear more about it, but if you are feeling um, called to working deeper with yourself, working with your energy body, doing some healing work, especially around that time, I always say that around these months when we are going deeper and deeper within, that's where we can, because nature is going within, we can also go within and do very deep transformational work, especially during Scorpio season and doing, seeing like everything coming up. So for every, anyone who wants to uh, go to the event, I will, of course, share the link to the event page. And also if you want to have... Um, the ex yeah this experience and want to try to get one of these tickets you can follow me and Rebecca on Instagram you can find all of the links in the show notes and then also comment below the post for this podcast why you would love to join because we want to hear also what you guys are going through and what you need in your life right now and then we'll make the announcement. So thank you so much for that, Rebecca. And maybe you want to actually talk about the, the purpose of the event and what, what is what type what part of your work is coming in here. Yeah, so the the healing event of the year is what we are calling it because of the portal and also the unique um, event that we have built up together. So uh, we will go more into like what Kundalini activation and, and the other thing is, but it is an event where we have mixed different practices. So we are mixing breath work, uh, yoga nidra, uh, inner dance Kundalini activation and sound journey into this like seamless experience where you let go, uh, connect with yourself and, uh, and with your own life energy. So the event is for people who want to open up, to transform, 
uh, and also connect both with themselves, but in this huge space, because we will be at Erik Eriksson's Hallen in Stockholm, which is this like beautiful, almost like cathedral. Uh, mm. And we will be up to 111 participants and 15 facilitators. So this is really like a unique event that haven't been made before in this kind of context because we are trying to remove all the boxes like mix practices mix experience from the facilitators there are both men and female facilitators and yeah so we're trying something new here and it feels like it's gonna be very magical mm, sounds very magical actually both mm. the space and the whole concept and I would love to hear, like, in your experience, how this activation of energy has been for you. What does it mean? And for anyone who's here, maybe have not worked with any type of energetic healing yet. Like, what does mm. what does it do for you? Yeah, so um, I am a facilitator within Kundalini Activation. Uh, I did my training this year in June uh, on Ibiza with... Uh, Sandra and Siegfried, who are my trainers, uh, and their practice come from Pai Villarasa, uh, who found uh, this energy on one of his journeys when he was um, alone on an island for a few months and uh, got activated. Uh, he found his this deep connection with a, with an energy that wanted to be awakened in him. Um, so when he he first had his experience, he then put a lot of time and years on researching about this energy, uh, trying to connect to it again, uh, and uh, also later then trying to teach out how to facilitate others. So this has this practice has it is has been do going on for quite almost two decades, but. Um, it has also changed a lot. So the people that he has trained has started their own schools. Mm -hmm. um, but he is also very like, um, he never call it his energy. He just found it because this energy lives within us all and it, it wants to be awakened. So that's how I kind of got into the facilitating. But if if we can talk about what, Kundalini activation is that that I do on my session. It, it is a practice, as I said, it, it is described very different. For me, I think it is depending on uh, your belief, your culture, your school, and also the teachers, but mostly about how the facilitator themselves uh, are experiencing the energy. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about like the theory of it but mostly about how I feel and what I believe about the energy so kundalini is um, is derived from sanskrit and it means among other things snake um, it is described as this coiled energy at the base of the spine that rises like a cobra when you activate it um, it's also described as the goddess Shakti who reunites with Shiva um, and also called the divine feminine energy. So when we activate this almost forgotten energy within us, it uh, rises through the chakras, activates the chakras and try to clear the path between the root chakra and crown chakra. Uh, and what happens when, when you clear this path it, is that it makes more space, you release stuff that no longer serves you, and you can see yourself truly, like your authentic self, your needs. Who am I behind all these roles that I have made up for myself? Like I was talking about my own journey, like who am I when I'm not a mother, not a wife, not a friend, not a colleague? Who am I? So when this energy is activated, I can see the person behind, the person within my core. Um, so for me, Kundalini activation is a dynamic meditation where 
where you connect with your essence and connect the body, mind and soul. Mm. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And I just, be, for myself, who's been on a very deep journey for almost two decades now and seeing that there are so many different tools and ways of working with yourself because if i if i look back on fi just 15 years ago what was accessible and what was there i mean we all we have something innate in us first of all that we the, the humans somehow always tend to have um desire to understand ourselves a little bit deeper through stories mythologies we try to find connections to something larger and as we go on this journey we realize you know how the microcosm and the macrocosm always reflect each other that we are part of something bigger but the bigger is part of us and i love that when you set an intention because that's what i've seen it's always if you go to a yoga or meditation class it, it's all depending on your intention i've been to classes where i'm just like now i'm just gonna go through this and it's mm. I'm just in my physical body and that's okay. Like I'm doing something for my physical body, for example, but not getting stuck there. Then what can I do with my mental body then? If I'm in the meditation, can I try to just silence the mind and work on healing that aspect? Because the mind can be almost like running all the time. It's like the physical body. If we would run all the time and not be still, there's no contrast or space that space in between so when you're working with meditation and subtle body which is in it's in my healing oracle for example i go through like first the physical body and then comes the mental body because we are aware of our thoughts and then the emotional body and then comes the energetic body and after that the spiritual body which is that it's it almost I love that you asked like the question, who am I? And I always ask also, what am I? Like, <laughs> because it, it also like, it's so intangible. And that's the space where we find healing across time and space. It's not even connected. It's beyond the energetics, but we have to work and recognize and understand the different aspects. There's not a fast track to anything. It It, it is about dedication and to also like understanding life from those different perspectives and, and dimensions. So I think that it's interesting how these energies get activated in different ways. It's kind of initia initiatory and we know exactly when we enter a practice, if it resonates with our body and our mm. soul at that time, time because we have different levels of maturity in our soul's past that's why some people are completely like can devote themselves into that practice and also like devote their whole lives into their spiritual practice and and devotion and then some people ha are, uh, have to work on the physical plane more and on this dimension so i love that this energy within us it's kind of I, I think it's interesting also how the serpent uh, also in the abrahamic traditions is connected to to the feminine and i'm thinking about the apple the apple is we're in that time now of the apple and the goddess if you think about it and mm. when you cut the apple it's like these five seed star and that's so connected to the venus cycles again the microcosm and the macrocosm so and then in our Norse tradition, just to connect to that, the serpent that keeps the whole world together by attaching itself to its tail. Now we're coming into the understanding of that inner journey, as you said, of what does it mean? Because in Chinese medicine, it's also about releasing stagnation sometimes, blockages mm. in our energetic body. Because when it gets stuck, you can just imagine like a faucet, if it's stuck, that water can't flow. And yeah. that's what I experienced with my first Reiki healing experience. Um, it was right before I went to Japan and did my first 
uh, Reiki healing uh, initiation with my Reiki master in Tokyo, but it was like someone uh, unveiled something yeah. for, after the first time. And it wasn't that I knew much about the healing. I was just called to have a healing session and she activated the angelic realm for me, which I was not familiar with, but probably we, we're all like surrounded by that energy. But it's kind of, so when you're talking about activation, it's really about that you hold the power to self-activate something with very clear intention as well. And also that not seeing it as, uh, a step-by-step -step linear process it's it is like a spiral we were talking about the spiral mm -hmm. in a negative way before but like a spiral that is not going only up and down it's going sideways so it's it's really interesting that symbolic of the kundalini also yeah coiled and moving up yeah and also like uh, it it feels for me it feels like a snake so it's also symbolic like in the feeling of the energy moving it's it's very wavy and and uh, you can feel it go around in the the body and fulfilling the body and also you you mentioned like kundalini can you can work with the energy with within many practices uh, I think the difference is how you approach it how you so called activate it. Um, so during a Kundalini activation session, they they call it the practice of surrender. Like we're trying to check out the mind, put the mind uh, somewhere else and just go into the body. How does it feel? What do I feel? So that's also why I call it a meditation because the session starts with you lie on a yoga mat, you close your eyes uh, in Shavasana with the palms up. And then on my session, I, I guide some breath. Uh, so a, a lighter version of breath work to really like connect to the body, get the mind into the body and, and stop all the logic thinking. Mm. And then we use music as a tool because we want to work with the brain waves, with the nervous systems, with fight and flight to kind of like shut off the, the logical brain and to activate up the system um, and kind of reprogram the brain and the, the mm. like, yeah, how we see things. Um, and then I, as a faci facilitator, I activate myself. So I, I activate up my energy and it comes into this. I used to talk about it like, like a bubble because that's how it feels. I can feel the bubble and I open up a space and my energy field can recognize yours. I, I feel a magnetic force almost like here lies your energy. So when I come near, your energy will respond to mine like, like a magnet. Um, and that's the interesting part when people are trying it for the first time, because we have a choice there. That's almost the, the only thing the participant needs to do is right there, like the first sensation of the energy. Will you go there with your mind and think, no, this was just like my hands were going away sleeping. No, this is just like it is cold in the room. No, this is not the energy. I don't believe in this. Or do you go there with a child's mind, like, hmm, what is this? And try to open up, because when you open up, the energy will grow. Mm -hmm. And then I can, as a facilitator, help the, your energy to move through the chakras and try to set it free, to flow freely in the body. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how we, within this practice, uh, activate the energy. and in group sessions, everyone who gets activated and get this bubble will uh, be a part of the, the whole space. Mm. So for every person who gets activated, the space gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. Um, but you can also do it one on one and one because yeah, you get all the <laughs> all the attention or what you, you're calling it. So as a facilitator, I I um, use uh, different mantras. I use, um, I can put touch on chakras or 
but mostly I just work in the field and try to open up your path between between your chakras so you can um, let it free flow. I love that because it sounds like almost like you're doing your own process, but then you have like this healing going on, which, you know, there are group Reiki healings. I think I used Mm -hmm. to do also healings in our prenatal yoga sometimes to give to the group and that can open up a lot of things. And so that, that makes it the practice kind of double because Mm -hmm. in any type of uh, spiritual practice even yoga classes the intention of the the teacher the guide is very important so when you're working it's not like a easy thing that you go in and you do it mindlessly we sit in meditation before the class for a reason to yeah i'm thinking because we are a lot of people who are on this path are also em- empathic and can pick up the the energy of other people it's important to work on your own energy body and how you also distinguish your energy body you start getting to know it and I love two things that you spoke about the breath work and the breathing right now we are in the season of the metal element so I wanted to remind about that that breath exercises it can be very simple like listening to your breath, uh, just being aware of it can help to boost your chi and your energy right now because we are working with the lung meridian, lung Mm -hmm. and large intestine meridian, the metal um, element. And also the thing about working with music and frequency, since everything is vibration, our body is vibratory we think it's like matter like firm matter Mm. but everything is vibration that's something i think many people don't understand why the powerful um uh, technology behind behind mantras for example Mm. or certain frequencies and tones i use it a lot in my uh, on instagram in my stories that i pick out like what resonates with that uh, frequency Mm. of what I'm writing because it does shift. And I think that a lot of people don't know that because we are listening to stuff. It's not only words, it's also the tones and and the levels of the sounds and that can highly affect us. That's why I think having like awareness around that is important. Mm. Yeah, and for me, that's like, I have always been very interested in music uh, and always like dancing and, and stuff. And so the part of my job where I make the playlist, it's like the most fun. And I also need to share because we're talking about language. We, Me and a, and a colleague did an online session because you can do these sessions online uh, and it works um, just as good. And we, we did one international with only North uh, music from the North. So only mm-hmm. Swedish, Finnish um and uh, we mixed it up to this like we called in the ancestors of the north mm. and we uh we had like this this journey within north history and that session was like i'm getting goosebumps when i'm talking about it because it was such a and no one knew swedish mm. no one knew the languages because it does something with the brain when we hear another language mm. and this is also something that pi is like researching on like this is this is something that's very interesting within this community to try to see what happens with the brain what happens with the nervous system when we have different brain waves and and sound waves and when we mix the songs in a different in a certain like order what happens with the journey so we build up on on a session we build up a journey where we have time to first release, let go, trust, and then we want to like bring up the heat. So the energy, the energy responds very, very um, like quickly to drums. And when when a song have many different layers, like when when the brain can't figure out, oh, now it's coming a soft part. Now it will be a lot of drums. Now someone will sing. But when it's like I also have this instrument. So sometimes I come and do some different noises to just like get us out of the brain. 
Um, mm. So that is probably the most powerful in the in the session. Like that's the different elements. I'm just like, you know, I'm just uh, directing the <laughs> the session in some way. And and also I wanted to say like it's not my energy that goes into someone else. I don't give the participant anything. They just respond to my field and their field wants to join mine. Mm -hmm. So if I'm having a bad day, the participant won't get bad energy. Like mm -hmm. I don't give the energy because it's everyone's energy. It's universal. It's uh, it's within everything. So mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can tune into these different energies depending mm -hmm. on how yeah how much we we ref want to reflect that because we that's the the law of resonance that we there is constant resonance with everything around us and in any healing modality you're never that's the the intention is never to give of your energy because we are working with essentially god energy it's it, we're not mm -hmm. we are not the creators of humans so we can no, like... we're just the space holders i can yeah. just hold a space where you can feel trust yeah where you can feel that i'm holding you i'm right here for you you can let go everything mm. that's coming right now is supposed to come let go trust it and i will catch you i will mm. be here uh, so that's the only role i i have i'm not a i'm not a healer I want to awaken your inner healer. I want you to be able to heal yourself. I'm just a tool and like a warm hug along the way. Yeah, I love that. And it's I think it's important to, for people because uh, the the topic of raising our frequency and awakening mm. energy, all of this, I uh, I was on a journey pretty much on my own for many years doing heavy 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 detoxing doing extreme like um like mantra practices this was started probably over 12 years ago and I was doing everything on my own because I had been led to that path for a long time which meant that I was opening up a lot that I hadn't dealt with as well I was thinking that I'm like getting into a better and better space but then I had this this is the only and I think I mentioned in in a different podcast episode as well many years ago that what happened was that I was working and I was using a lot of sound frequencies and also guided meditation but sometimes even on my own but I had an uh, activation. I can't name it. But what happened was that I was uh, laying down for a meditation because I love the I love when you can release the body. There's different energies in sitting up in meditation and holding that yang position. But when you get into the yin state and can release the body, you get the different. So it's it, they have different purposes. I love the laying down meditations I was laying down and I can just remember that I was entering like that in between state where I was mm. not in my body but not uh, sleeping but I was aware and I had this all of a sudden it was kind of scary back then because I didn't have <clears throat> I was practicing yoga so I had a yoga teacher but I the, the experience I had I had on my own where I suddenly felt, um, and it was not intentional, but I felt like in that state, suddenly someone had a pole coming up my spine, like really intensely. And I had experiences as a child uh, falling on my like uh, tailbone, which twice I remember, which made me like really shook up because it's a, powerful spot that's why it's so powerful in mm -hmm. birth as well like that root and grounding mm -hmm. that happens in in the birthing process and when having children but that the experience was so physically painful actually mm -hmm. and I couldn't get away from it because it was happening and it culminated in 
hearing sounds of om like imagine like thousand mm. voices that was my experience of some type of activation uh, but it can that was maybe too much too soon and that's what i wanted to say also when we start activating it's not always comfortable things start happening or you're working on healing you're untapping something or you're you have this something in the subconscious or in a past life or something that starts to come up it means that it needs to be worked on because people think that healing is something that you do and then you're done and the, mm, no it, when yeah. you start working on healing it's like a, it, it's never like end a, of storing it's like yeah when, when how deep can i go like yeah and it yeah. doesn't i mean you can choose to not work that deeply and and live in mm, this life course. and that's fine too but when you start working act when you feel called to start then mm. it will unlock something that can be also uncomfortable uh, which you have to like be <laughs> prepared for because for yeah. me that unlocked a lot it wasn't like I ended up in bliss somehow not mm. at all it started to 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 reawaken uh, past life wounds it started mm. to it, it did guide me to where I am today, but it, it it's not an easy journey. And I love the 1111. It's a portal to something new, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And also, I just want you to like uh, put in like during this kind of practice, it's very soft. You only get what what you're ready for, the amount of energy flow that you're ready for, because you are conscious during the whole time. And it's a very like soft activation uh, and you can always stop like mm -hmm. well, if you google kundalini activation it can look pretty weird it can look you can get frightened of looking at it if people are dancing and shaking but that don't always happen there's no goal with a kundalini activation that you need to dance the most transformative journey is, is actually when we are still when Mm. Uh, when the nothingness happened, the bliss states mm. or the vision state or like the deep meditation, the movement is the releasing of the energy and the blockages. Um, but I, I really think that for this kind of practice, if you Google it, you can think like, no, this is too big to, for me. But um, it isn't because it's like a, a wave it will come to you the, the right amount will come when you're ready to let go when you're ready to feel it so i just wanted to put up that also um after your after your sharing mm, like love um you don't go in you can't get too much of course you can get mm. messages or insights where that that's tough to know about yourself like i don't mm. i'm not happy here i don't like when people are because you're your intuition gets so strong uh, mm. after a session. You you really feel what's what what are your uh, like where are your limits at? Mm. How do you want people to treat you? How do you treat people? How do you feel? Um, what do you love? What mm. don't you love? And those kind of insights can be very tough to get to know, um, but they grow on you. You don't get everything like to. Um, on one session, you know everything, and then you're like um, smashed after a session. It's more like uh, a little at a time in the pace that you're ready for. I love that. It's so important. Mm. And, and it's, um, it, I actually, not, it, because you asked me if I had attended one of these meditations, and I did. Uh, it was, I think it was during New Year's last, yeah, the last New Year's actually. And uh, I had that experience of stillness, complete stillness actually, but it was so, uh, so activating to listen and then to feel like heavy into the body, which I needed mm. back then. I needed to ground more because mm. when you're working a lot of energy work, so I, I have experienced that in some points of, of um, time, the intuition stops for you to also get grounded. And I've had this year that experience, I think at least six months of extreme grounding and uh, being within the body and in this 3D. But mm -hmm. as we left, I think the summertime, that's when it things started to re recalibrate so it also goes in different uh 
chapters and yeah we and this is so through. important like when you when you go to a session like the session is just like this little percent of the whole journey that's just the activation if you call it but then when you come home that's when the real work is starting mm. like what are you going to do with this feeling you have in your body with the knowledge that you have about yourself after the session will you change what you what your routine looks like before you go to work Mm. Will you change what you do before you go to sleep? Or will you start kickboxing? Because that was what you felt like you wanted to start kickboxing. Do you take that step? Like how you tune into the frequencies after the session, that's the like majority of the, the journey you get and the, and the benefits that you get from going to a session. The session is just like a little a little amount of space where we feel the trust to start the journey mm. and then afterwards that's where like the magic happens for me it mm. has changed my life and the way that I look at, at myself and I told my husband this summer like this is the first time in my life that I actually genuinely love myself mm. like all parts of me I have looked at my wounds I have nursed them not all of them of course this take a lifetime to do but mm. I have accepted everything about me and it's so like liberating to feel because I have thought at times in life that yeah I love myself yeah I'm self-confident yeah I have my own back but I I haven't really really loved myself that has come out of this journey by having the courage to really go in there and have a look who is Rebecca who, who is mm. this girl and who is my inner child uh, and uh, and also then doing the work after the sessions because I went pretty regular for two years on these kinds of sessions before I went on the training to be a facilitator so that's my mission I want to spread more love mm. that's why I wanted to be a facilitator I want to I feel so honored to be able to hold this space where people come and feeling so vulnerable uh, and want to start the journey to self-love and more love by that in the world. So mm. that's my mission. <laughs> that's a beautiful mission. I'm super excited for you. And uh, I can just say again, if you are feeling called to the 1111 11 event in it's uh, physically in stockholm so it's for primarily swedish and nordic people i think it will be easiest but if anyone who's abroad we uh, actually have people flying in from all over the world i we love have... that yeah i mean we are up in the north we are uh, definitely i would say our nature and when winter comes is the dark goddess time of really going within and i think i've been saying that to many people around the world how imp how important our nature is here and the, the frequency that we have up here which is so different than any other place i feel like so i i would definitely invite people who want to go on a deep journey just being on the mm -hmm. land the sacred lands here and uh, they can just activate something we know that when we travel that different spots have energy frequencies that we need so if for anyone who wants to join i will uh, put the link in the show notes and for those of you who wanna uh yeah have the chance to get a free ticket you can follow us uh make a comment on the post on the video to uh, just share why you want to join and we will connect with you and how ca can people find you on instagram yeah so my account is alinda dance mm -hmm. alinda dance and okay. i do all my marketing about my sessions there i hold sessions both online and mostly in stockholm um yeah. right now yeah i love that great i will share the links for that as well and i want to thank you so much for uh, just sharing and doing your work i'm really excited to uh yeah chat more again and uh, yeah just thank you so much again mm.
And thank you, Shireen, for inviting me mm. and for for this podcast. It, it's such a beautiful place to be at and to be able to hear other experiences. So thank you for doing this. Thank you.